It was the Greek philosophers who first proposed that matter is made up of tiny particles. Atomos means indivisible. This is what the term atom was derived from. Note, dates do not need to be learnt off. They may, however, be useful for a science quiz. Many years later, John Dalton, an English chemist, put forward his famous theory on atomic structure. He stated that all matter is made up of tiny particles called atoms, and that these atoms are indivisible. This means they cannot be broken down into simpler particles. William Crookes, almost 70 years later, performed experiments by passing electric currents through glass tubes. The tubes were maintained under low pressure to help ensure a vacuum was present. He did not want molecules in air interfering with his results. Crookes' first experiment involved a Maltese cross inside some glass tubing. The glass tubing was attached to a battery and once switched on, beams of light from the cathode was produced. The result was a shadow of the Maltese cross being produced. Crookes then concluded that these rays, cathode rays, travel in straight lines and produce a fluorescence. For your leaving certificate, you could be asked to draw this diagram. Crookes' second experiment involved a paddle wheel. The setup was largely the same, except for a paddle wheel replacing the Maltese cross. The result, cathode rays strike the paddle wheel, pushing it towards the anode direction. Crookes concluded that cathode rays must contain particles with enough energy to move the paddle wheel. Crookes didn't realise it, but this was the beginning to discovering the electron. Not long later, J.J. Thompson expanded on Crookes' experiments. He wanted to know if the particles had a charge. His experiment was similar to Crookes. However, he attached two plates in the vacuum tube. When he passed the cathode rays in between uncharged plates, they hit the fluorescent screen undeflected. However, when he charged the plates with using electricity, and repeated the experiment, he found that the cathode rays were deflected towards the positive plate. He concluded that cathode rays were negatively charged, as light charges repel light charges. Thomson is credited with electron discovery. Thomson continued his studies on electrons using electromagnets. He adjusted the strengths of electromagnets and found the charge to mass ratio of the electron. It is very important that you state in an exam that Thomson found the charge to mass ratio as he did not discover the mass of an electron nor the charge of an electron. Thomson made two discoveries. He discovered that cathode rays had a negative charge, and he discovered the charge to mass ratio of an electron. It was Robert Millikan who actually determined the charge on an electron. His experiment is known as Millikan's oil drop experiment. In 1909, Robert Millikan, working at the University of Chicago, succeeded in measuring the charge on the electron. He allowed a fine spray of oil to settle through a hole into a chamber where he could observe their fall. The top and bottom of the chamber consisted of electrically charged plates. 
He introduced a source of X-rays which can cause creation of charges when they strike matter. Charges produced by the X-rays attached to an oil droplet, producing one or more charges on the droplet. When there is no voltage applied, the fall of the droplets is determined by their mass and the viscosity of air through which they fall. When a voltage is applied, the droplets that have a negative charge will fall more slowly, stop falling, or even rise, depending on the number of charges on them. By adjusting the applied voltage and observing the droplets both with voltage off and voltage on, Milliken was able to determine that the charges on the droplets were all multiples of a smallest value, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. He took this to be the charge on a single electron. Thomson proposed a structure of an atom in 1898, which is known as Thomson's plum pudding. You are expected to be able to draw and label this diagram. Although protons had not yet been discovered, Thomson knew that there must be some attractive force to prevent electrons being lost all the time. His model was widely accepted until 1909. Ernest Rutherford is largely credited with providing the correct structure of an atom. Rutherford bombarded a tin piece of gold foil with alpha particles. Alpha particles are positively charged particles. He made three observations. Firstly, the vast majority of alpha particles went straight through undeflectedly. Secondly, some alpha particles were deflected at large angles. And most surprisingly of all, a tiny amount of alpha particles were deflected straight back. His three observations led him to make three conclusions which are discussed in the next slide. You are expected to know three observations and Rutherford's three conclusions from these observations. Rutherford stated that the positive particles in the centre of the atom are called protons. Rutherford's experiment meant that Thomson's plum pudding model was incorrect, as no reflection of alpha particles should have occurred for his model. James Chadwick, a student of Rutherford, is credited with the discovery of the neutron. The neutron was last to be discovered because it had no charge, therefore it was the most difficult to detect. Chadwick performed a very similar experiment to Rutherford, except he used beryllium instead of gold. Behind the beryllium was a paraffin wax block. The alpha particles knocked neutrons out of the beryllium, which then caused the neutrons to knock protons out of the paraffin block. You need to know the charges and locations of the subatomic particles. You also need to know the relative masses.